little title of this mini message is, I am that I am. Now, Exodus 3, 13 and 14 says this. Moses, he meets, of course, he meets with God at the burning bush. And this voice comes from the burning bush. But this is what happens in verse 13. It says, Then Moses said to God, Behold, I'm going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? And what shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent you. All right? I am. That's uh, in the Hebrew. That's a thing called the tetragrammaton. The I am, the great I am statement. In fact, Jews, if you were a Jew, you can't even say the word. It's Yahweh. You can't say the word. When they have it in their Bibles, when they have it in their scriptures, they leave letters out because it's too holy of a word to speak. But that's what God said. He said, tell them, I am sent you. I am. Not I was, not I'm going to be, but I am. I'm always present tense. Always present tense, okay? Now, when you're talking about God, he is who he is. And guess what? You can't change him. You can't change him. You can try all you want, and you can't change. But we think we can change God. You think I'm crazy by saying that, but we think we can change God. There are some people that actually believe that they can be bad enough, they can be awful enough, they can be sinful enough, that God will hate them. And you know what? He says, and his, the scriptures tell us this, God is love. And no matter how bad you are, he can't help himself. He's love. No matter what you do, you can't change him. He's love. You can say, but I'm trying to make him hate me. He says, I can't do it. I'm love. Okay? And I am that I am, and you can't change me. And he doesn't change. Okay? Uh, Malachi, Malachi 3 6 says this For I am the Lord, I change not. Sit. You can't change me. James 1 17 says this Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, variableness. Or shout up turning. In other words, he can't be changed. He won't change. He won't change for you or anybody else. He doesn't need to change because perfection doesn't need any change. And he's perfection. God's nature is to give us good and perfect gifts. And nobody has the power to change that about him. See, God doesn't give you junk. And God doesn't give you sickness, by the way. Because that's not a good or a perfect gift, is it? That's a gift nobody wants. That's a gift everybody would like to return. So I'd like to return sickness, too, to the one who sent it. And it wasn't God who sent it. Okay? Put it back on the devil who sent it, not God, because God gives good and perfect gifts. God's nature is to give good and perfect gifts. 2 Timothy 2.13 says this, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He can't deny himself. He can't change for, uh, for you. He says, I can't change who I am. God is love. God is faithful. God gives good and perfect gifts. He says, I can't change that for you guys. You guys can think anything you want. You guys can have all the imaginations about me you want. You can make all the accusations about me you want, but it won't change who I am because I am who I am. God never goes back on a promise because if he did, he'd be a liar. And you know what? God can't lie. He's not going to change that for anybody. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. All of them. Every single one. Titus 1, 2 says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God can't lie. You can't change him. You know, the Bible also says that God is no respecter of persons. He can't lie. And what that means, no respecter of persons, it means if he heals this man right here, Jonathan, he'll heal this person over here too because he doesn't count anybody higher than anyone else. He counts us all the same. And he can't lie. That's who he is. That's who he is. He isn't going to change for anybody. God's nature has nothing to do with our influence upon him. You can't change him. His nature is who he is. He was who he was. He is who he is. He's going to be who he is already. He's not going to change for anybody. But a lot of us think something we did has changed God in our life, okay? 1 John 4, 8. This is God's word to us. He says, whoever does not Love does not know God because God is love. And he can't change. You can say, well, God's hate. Well, no, he isn't. He's love. You can't change who he is. And you know what? God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. That whoever so ever believe in him might not perish but have eternal life. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world. Why? Because he loved you. Why? Because that's who he is. Can't help himself. You know, there's some things you just can't help yourself because that's just who you are. God can't help himself. He loves you. Even if you're a horrible person, he loves you. 
right? You say, but maybe I can just push the wrong button. You'll really get mad. Hey, he's going to love you anyway. You, know, you can't do anything. Change him. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Well, you know what? If God is really God and he is who he says he is, then guess what? He's the final word in every, in every case, isn't he? And he says, you know what? The thing that you think's too hard, it's not too hard for me. You've got to understand who I am. I'm God. And I'm the one who is the God of miracles. And I'm the God who you cannot change. And I'm the God who has worked miracles from the beginning. And I'm still working miracles today. And you can't change me. Some people think that church ages change and God changes his mind. Some people think that the God of the Old Testament is a whole different God than the God of the New Testament. And the God of the Old Testament was a really angry dude. And he's out there to swat everybody he can. And the God of the New Testament, he came as this hippie love child. That just, oh, I just love y'all. They don't realize Jesus Christ is the express image of the Father. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Jesus said, the words that I say, they come from my Father. He says, the things that I do, they come from my Father. He says, you're seeing the Father right now in real life. This is who he really is. He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. Our thoughts change about him. Our ideas of who he is change. But he doesn't change. He is who he is. Right? Well, who is he? Well, I'll tell you what. He's the Savior. Isaiah 43, 11 says this, I, even I am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior, period. Our God tells us that his nature is that he's a Savior. He saves people. His nature is that he's a healer. He heals people. You can say, maybe I can beg God and convince him to heal me. You don't understand. He can't help himself. If you will just believe in him, he'll heal you because that's who he is. He'll manifest himself to you if you will just simply believe. Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord who heals you. Psalms 103, 2 through 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. That's who he is. He's a healer. Jesus is God come down in human flesh. Jesus has the nature of the Father. Jesus is the same I am that changes not as we see in the Old Testament. And let me read a little scripture here, John 18, 2 through 6. Now Judas, who betrayed Jesus, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. This is when they went to arrest Jesus. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a det detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, and you know what Jesus said? This is what we get in our King James. It says, I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with him. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Do you know what he really said? He didn't say, I am he. In the Greek, he said, I am. He said, I'm the I am. I'm the great I am. I'm the same I am that's in the Old Testament. And guess what? When he said, I am, they all fell to the ground. Showing the power of him. Showing that that they aren't going to take him unless he wants to be taken. Because he is who he is. And he's God. In Jesus' name, baby, be happy. <laughs> I am would normally be a complete sentence. But it wasn't just two words. I am is a declaration of who he is. He says, I am that I am. I have not changed. I will not change. There is one God. There's only one God. And there will never be another God. And as long as you know me for who I am, I will be that to you. I will be your healer. I'll be your deliverer. I'll be your savior. I'll be your everything. Yeah? We just have to accept what he is. Accept him for who he is. John 88, 8, 57 through 59. Jesus was not yet arrested. So he was with the Jews and he was speaking to them. And uh, he told them about, uh, that he knew all about Abraham. And the Jews said this. Uh, said, so the Jews said to him, you're not 50 years old yet, and you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. That's that word again. I am. He says, I'm the I am that was back then. I pre-existed Abraham. I manifested in the flesh about 2,000 years ago, he could say to you today, but I've always been around. He's the great I am. Jesus was the flesh and blood incarnation of the invisible God. That's what Colossians 1.15 tells us. The Son is the image of the invisible God what it says. The fullness of God dwelt in Jesus Christ. That's what the scripture says. I'm not making it up. Colossians 2, 9. For the, in Christ, all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form. 
Jesus is the express image to us of the Father. Hebrews 1.3 says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven. Now, remember when Father God said, I am the Lord, your healer, in the Old Testament? Well, Jesus was a living demonstration of that. John 14, 11, Jesus says this, Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe me for the evidence of the works themselves. What works did Jesus do? What works was Jesus talking about? Jesus was showing them, I am the Lord that heals you. Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Do you remember God says, I am the Lord who heals you. I heal all your diseases. Jesus went about healing all their diseases. There was not a disease that was too big for him. He didn't say, wait a minute, you've got cancer, you've got AIDS, that's too big. He healed every single type of disease. Matthew 8, 16 says this, When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word, and he healed all the sick. What about that one that he said to, uh, you know, this is not your time. God's trying to work something out in you. God's trying to teach you something. Didn't happen, did it? What about the one that he said, you're not good enough. You're not straightened out with God, so you can't be healed yet. What about that one? Doesn't exist. Jesus healed them all. Why? Because that's who he is. That's who he is. He's a healer. He can't help himself. He goes about. He creates good. He does good to all of his creation because he's a good God, right? He's a good father. He loves us whether we, hate, whether we hate him, whether we serve him or not. He still loves you. He heals us because he's the Lord, our healer. He heals our, all our diseases. That's who he is. Do you remember when God the Father said in the Old Testament, we quoted it earlier, I know of no other Savior, says I'm it. Well, guess what? Jesus is the demonstration of that in the flesh. Acts 4.12, salvation is found in no other name, for there's no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ is a demonstration in the flesh of the Father. The point I want to make is this. Nothing you do changes who God is. God can change you, but you can't change him. We think that God must hate us if we do wrong, and God's word tells us he's love, and you can't make him hate you. He loved you while you were yet in your sins. The Bible tells us that while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for the ungodly. While you were still a sinner, when you weren't serving him, when you turned your back on him, he says, but I love you anyway. Does that mean that he accepts everything that you did back then? Of course not. Does that mean he wants to leave you in that condition? Of course not. But the fact that you're in the wrong condition and he wants to save you from that condition doesn't negate the fact he's always loved you. He loved us, it says, or it says we love him, Because he first loved us. Thank you, Jesus. His nature is truth. No one can change that. Do you realize he calls himself the only Savior, and yet we see Jesus as a demonstration of that salvation? We just need to accept the Savior. You see, the Bible tells us that Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, but the whole world's not saved. Why? Because they haven't accepted him. Do you realize by his stripes... The stripes laid on Jesus' back. We were healed. But how come not everybody's healed? We haven't all accepted that. Well, tonight we're going to accept that, aren't we? He healed everybody that was brought to him. Do you know everybody that was brought to Jesus, he healed? Every single person that was brought to him? Do you know everybody that came to Jesus was healed? Every single one. There wasn't a single person he turned away. So why would he return anybody away tonight? Why? Why? Well, you can have all kinds of reasons why, but they're just not true. And all God looks for you to do is to step out of the boat. He says, you know what? If you'll just step out of the boat and believe that I can heal, guess what? I can heal. Now, do I ever see God heal? I see God heal all the time. All the time. I take people out sometimes several times a week, and we see people healed all the time. Is that right, Mel? He's been out with me. Is that right, Bob? He's been out with me. Every time we go out, we see people, people healed, don't we? Because God's our healer, and he hasn't changed. Aaron, you've been out. Every time, every time, people get healed. Well, that's the end of the message because we're going to get to the healing part. Now, I want to straighten something out for you. Is I used to think a whole lot of things about healing that I don't think anymore. 
because I've seen the evidence that it's just simply not true. It was taught for a long time, and I got stuck in this rut. It was taught that if I'm going to pray for you, you have to be in agreement with me. And if your faith's not strong enough, you won't get healed. And you know what? That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says those that believe will lay their hands on the sick, they'll recover. So you know what? I started to do something kind of crazy. I started to pray for people that said they didn't even believe in healing, and they got healed. I prayed for people that says, but I don't believe. They got healed. I prayed for people that says, I don't even believe in God. They still got healed. Why? Because I'm the one who's believing. So if you think, Tom, I'd like to get healed tonight, but I don't know if I have enough faith. That's okay. I'll have it for you. Okay? Because I'm a son of God. You're a son of God. And God gives to us healing. And so we're going to appropriate that for you tonight. So what I often do is lots of you guys that go out with me, I've taken a lot of folks out. When I go out, people um, that we pray for, if they're Christians, I instruct them carefully. I say, oh, you're a Christian. Oh, well, we've got to pray for you special. Is here what I've got to do for a Christian. We got, I'm going to pray for you right now, and please don't pray with me. They go, what, what, what? Don't pray with me. I don't want you to exercise any of your faith. Because here's the reason. I said, I'm going to pour into you. I just want you to be a sponge and absorb it. What happens a lot of times we have this battle. As, as I'm praying, they're praying, and we're back and forth, back and forth, and they're trying to get a different prayer than I'm trying to get. Just relax and enjoy it, and let God touch you. And God's going to take away your pains. Now, do we see visible miracles? Yes, we see visible miracles. I can't even tell you. It's a crazy little thing, but I, a lot of people who have been delivered will know. I can't tell you how many legs I've seen grow out. I mean, it's just getting ridiculous. I've seen tumors disappear, okay? Uh, we had a lady come up here one time, and uh, it was about a year ago, a year and a half ago. She came up, and I didn't know what was wrong with her. She looked perfectly healthy. And I said, well, what can I pray for you for? She goes, I got a tumor on my breast. And she goes, and I got a tumor on my arm, and they're cancer. And I go, oh, well, I don't have a lot of time to freak out about it. I guess I just got to pray for it. So I prayed for her. And she put her hand in her bra and said, it's gone. And then she offered to let me put my hand in her bra. I said, not doing that. Not doing that. So her daughter was with her. So her daughter put her hand in there and goes, it's gone. So I said, you know what? That's awesome. But I want you to go to the doctor because I want the doctor to see it. So she went to the doctor. And the doctor gave the report. The, the tumor on her arm started to shrink down. And the doctor gave the report and says, I can't find any cancer at all. Amen. That's a good report. But it gets better than that. The doctor said, I can't find any cancer at all, but I don't believe that because I saw it. It was there. So I'm going to put you through some very serious testing. We're going to test you to death, you know. The test will probably kill you, but we'll find out if you got cancer or not. <laughs> so they put her through extreme testing. And they had to come back with a piece of paper that she brought to my office and said, no cancer. Can God heal? I could go on and on and on. Now, not everybody here knows me. That's fine. But if you see my video, some of you that are the video followers, you'll see hundreds of people healed. Is it because Tom's so special? No, it's because Tom actually just simply, like the rest of you, can believe that God can do this. That's all. That's all. I say to people, you know, people like you to be humble. And so, you know, they would like me to say something. And I say, I don't even say that. I say, you know what? There's nothing special about me. I don't say that. I say there's something very special about me. I'm a son of God. And you know what? Sons of God rule and reign with Christ. And you know what? Sons of God have authority. And daughters of God have authority. And you know, when we speak, demons tremble. Okay? When we speak, sickness obeys because we're sons of God. You can't be a half son of God. You're a son of God or you're not a son of God. Every son of God is given the same authority. Everybody. Every son of God is given the same inheritance. Everybody. So we believe for healing. If you have pain tonight, you're going to leave here with no pain. You're just not going to have any pain when you leave. And that's an outrageous statement. But so many people have been with me, they know. They've seen. You say that. That sounds really bold. And then it happens. Why? Because God doesn't let our words fall to the ground, but he performs that that we speak. So we speak in faith. And we're going to say people are going to get healed tonight. So right now, I want to ask the people to come up, all you people that need healing. Um, form two lines, side by side here. Two lines, as long as you want it to be. And I'm going to call up some folks that are going to help me out. And these folks that I'm going to call up are people that actually have been out with me and prayed for folks, and they have seen miracles as well. Okay? So if you've got pain in your body, if you've got an issue in your body, uh, come and stand in line here. All right? Now, Mel and Aaron, you two guys. Oh, Aaron, we got to catch you after service, right? Yeah, okay. You and Aaron. 
All right. Uh, Bob and Vicki. Patrick, are you still here somewhere? Okay. All right. I'm going to have uh, my mother-in-law. Omni, you want to come up here? She's going to be my prayer partner. All right. Now, these folks have all prayed for people and seen miracles. Is that right? All of us. All of us. We've all been out and done it. So you think, well, maybe Tom's a higher son of God. No, I'm not a higher son of God. I'm just a son of God. And we can all do this. So we're going to pray for you. So uh, it isn't just, don't think this way. I want you to know this too. If you don't know me, I want you to know something. Is everything I do and these people do, you can do too. And I train people to do this. So if you say, just Tom has to lay his hand. It can only be Tom. It's not so all of us can do this. And you can do it too. You may not know that, but it's the truth. You can do it too. So if you want to be trained in this, just talk to me. We'll take you out and train you. All right. So uh, go ahead. Pick a team. Come on up to us. First people, come forward. Okay. 